after I, after I left in in a sense, this is that was in '93, I think. I decided that I, I I really missed playing samba and having the chance to 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 go out and perform things that I'd written. And so I, I, I had a, when, when I left, the guy who started in a sense, he'd gone off to Cornwall, he's still there now actually. And, and Colin. Colin, yeah, he made a, made a good life for himself there. But he handed over the class that he was running at Band on the Wall to me. And I said to the people who were in this class, I'd really like to, to form a samba school, what's that? It's a, a usually where a, a community in a particular city in Brazil get together and play the rhythms that come from that, that, that area. They have different names. I mean, you have maracatus in, in Salvador in the north. You have afoches, in, again, coming from the same place. You have a rhythm called Bumba Me Boy, which is a whole troop of people, and they have a music that's associated with that. Uh, a number, it has three different flavors of Bumba Me Boy. Um, but I really wanted to explore more, more Brazilian music. It was still there, that, like, as Danny was putting it, that obsession, the, 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 it was drawing me to it, if you like. And I liked the idea of ordinary people being able to express themselves using this, this card. And you felt that in basically 95 in Manchester that was really lacking? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, well, to, I don't think I really thought about it, the, the implications of starting up something like that in Manchester. Uh, I just thought I really want to do it. And I, I, we've done loads and loads and loads and loads of workshops all over the place in schools, for corporate clients, for uh, parties, different, 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 different people, different clients. And I, I always noticed that it was something that was very inclusive. Any, you know, any, most people can do it. Can, can take, they can find because if you haven't got that much, even if you, you know, you haven't got that much dexterity, you can see this is the national national instrument, so it's a, it's a little bit more you know, tricky. But mostly, you just put on a drum. And you hit it, you know, I say hit it then in response to that one. Ding, boom, ding, boom, ding, boom, ding, boom, ding, boom, ding. Boom, ding. Um, and it's the same with Danny. Somebody will play and Danny will say, right, take this step. And they copy him. And in no time at all, they're actually doing that, the dance, which I still can't do. <laughs> so is it, is, it, is, it, is it quite hard in terms of the dance itself? Is it quite hard to... See, for a beginner, somebody just came in to actually pick it up and, you know, be in line with the yeah, music it, and the beat. Yeah, it could depend how, how you approach it, what you're looking at. If you're looking at the, the dance side, for instance, uh, if you're looking at mainly the, the popular samba step that people see people do, it's not something you pick up overnight. It's something you have to practice and learn. If, unless you're already natural or you're a dancer, you can pick up steps quickly. Um, but if in other modes, it can be more simplified. If you're doing parades, for instance, you don't have to always be doing like the samba step. But it's more, it can me more about the costume. He's saying this, but I don't think I've ever seen anybody walk in the door because people usually, when they walk in, they know which one they want to do, whether they want to do dancing or do drumming. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen anybody who's, who came who said, I want to do dancing, who didn't learn how to tap the sambu. Daddy didn't, yeah. didn't manage to teach them. They, they always, they do have to go away and practice, 